Well, good morning. We want to welcome you out to Five Minutes or More with Pastor Tim. It is May the 17th, 2022. We are at a Tuesday in our week today. It is going to be yet another hot day uh, in North Carolina. And uh, so just get ready for that. But it is a day that we will give praise to the Lord. I want to ask you a question as we get started this morning, uh, have you ever had one of those mornings where your mind was just going a thousand miles an hour? Maybe that's you today. I know that it was me. I woke up this morning and my goodness, it, it just seemed like about four o'clock this morning. I woke up and there were so many things uh, that I had on my mind and it can be awfully overwhelming and at times it can be confusing and so I needed this morning to do something that I'm also going to challenge you to do before you start your day, and that is to recenter on God. You know, there's so many things that can call for our attention. We think about things that we have to do. We think about, think about things we maybe have to fix or approach or work on or do, and our mind goes so many different directions. But what about God? What about him? Have we stopped and focused on him this morning? So I want to challenge you. I want to challenge me this morning before we do anything else in this day to focus. Good morning, Miss Judy. Great to see you this morning. We want to focus on God for just a moment. I know there are so many things calling for our attention today. I know there are so many things to worry about today, but let's take a minute and just focus on God. Let's have an Isaiah chapter 6 kind of moment where it says that he saw the Lord high and lifted up. He was on his throne. The angels were going around him saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Let's take a moment and realize that God is still upon the throne today. He is not walking around, pacing back and forth, wringing his hands about any situation that we're facing. Heaven is at peace today. God is still in control. We can look to him today. We can find our strength in him. So let's take a minute and just recenter on God. God's got this. God's got you. He knows this day. Listen, God has already been through this whole day. He lives both in the past and in the future. My friend, he knows everything that's going to happen to you, to you today. He's already got a plan to help you with your day. He's already seen you through. You just need to trust him today. And so trust God, look to God, find your center in God, and he will guide you through this day. Well, you have in your reading today, uh, we're going to be looking at 1 Chronicles chapter 14 through chapter 16 and Acts chapter 24. Those are your readings today and you'll see those up in your caption. Let's talk about those for just a moment this morning. In 1 Chronicles chapter 14 through 16, you're going to see David he has ascended to the throne. He is now the rightful king. Uh, but at this point, he's going to come against the Philistines. Now, he's going to have to come against the enemies who have been very prosperous under the leadership of Saul. Now, they have a great deal of power and territory that they should not have. And so, Paul, uh, or excuse me, now David is going to have to come against them. Now, you're going to notice something as you read these chapters this morning in 1 Chronicles. You're going to see that over and over it says, And David inquired of the Lord. David inquired before he went out. He inquired of the Lord. Before he charged them, he inquired of the Lord. Over and over, you're going to see that phrase used in your reading today. Contrast that to Saul, who never sought the Lord. He was making decisions on his own, and here David is inquiring of the Lord. This is why he is considered a man after God's own heart. This is why Saul was replaced and David was put upon the throne, because he was a man who was always seeking after the Lord. How much trouble, as I read that, I thought this, how much trouble could I have saved to myself if I would have just inquired 
of the Lord. There's so many things that we do in our life impetuously. We make decisions based upon our own thought patterns and we get into trouble. How much could we save ourselves if we just inquired of the Lord? That's what it means to seek God. That's what it means to look to God every second, every moment of our lives. Listen, if today we will do like David and inquire of the Lord in every situation, whatever you're facing at work, whatever decision you have to make, whatever's going on within your life, inquire of the Lord. Seek God's advice. Seek him moving in your life. Ask him what to do. Sit and listen to what God is trying to say to you, my friend, and it will change the dynamic of the decisions that you make in your life. This is why David was so successful. He inquired of the Lord. Can I ask you, are you inquiring of the Lord? There's so many things that we've got upon our minds, so many things that we've got to do. Have you inquired? of the Lord. Have you asked him what you should do? What's the right decision to make? We need to be inquiring of the Lord. So reflect on that as you're reading in First Chronicles that he was a man that inquired of the Lord. Now when we move over to Acts chapter 24, we're going to find that Paul now is going to be taken before Governor Felix. He's on his way to Rome. He is being judged by all these governors along the way because the religious leaders are doing all they can to make sure that Paul is taken and either thrown into prison for the rest of his life or killed for his faith. They can't do that. The religious leaders don't have that kind of power, so they're going to the powers of Rome, and they're trying to accuse him and get him killed because of what he's saying and what he's preaching. And so now he's standing before Governor Felix, and you'll see this in Acts chapter 24. What I find interesting here is he's standing before Felix. He's talking about his faith. It's going to say in this passage, Acts 24, it's going to say, and Felix was familiar with the way. The way is what they call Christianity back then. He said he was familiar with Christianity. He knew about it. He was familiar with the terms. He was familiar with the people. And he intently was listening to what Paul had to say. And then all of a sudden, he looks at Paul and he says these words. He says, almost Almost you persuade me, Paul. I'm listening to you, and I'm almost persuaded. He said, but but here's the thing. I, I'll call you back at a more convenient time. And so he sends Paul away. Now, the last verse of 24 says that ultimately Felix was replaced by another governor. As far as we know, Felix never had that opportune time. He never called Paul back into his presence he missed a golden opportunity in his life. He was right there at heaven's door. He had an opportunity right there to accept Jesus Christ, to change his fate, and he sent Paul away. A missed opportunity. Now, what I want to talk to you about this morning for just a second is missed opportunities. Have you ever missed a golden opportunity? I know I have. And you probably look back on your life and you see several times that there were some great opportunities for you that you just simply missed. All of us have missed opportunities. But I want you to think about today, my friend, the opportunities that you have on this Tuesday, this day, that God has given you. Why don't we just live our lives to where we don't miss the opportunities, but we take advantage of them? That There was a saying back in Virginia when I pastored there that there was a tombstone, and on that tombstone, it just simply said these words, Oh, that I might have five minutes more. You know, the truth of the matter is, my friend, we oftentimes look back on situations and wish we had one minute more, five minutes more, just another chance to make things right. But my friend, there's no guarantee of tomorrow. We don't know if we're going to be here tomorrow. Tomorrow, Tim Gore might not be here. He might be in heaven. This is the day the Lord has given me to live. I need to take advantage of the opportunities while I have it. I need to live my life in such a way that I'm utilizing the opportunities that I have. Let me give you several things I believe that you need to do realizing that your time is short upon the earth, taking advantage of some opportunities. Number one, 
You need to love like you've never loved before. On this Tuesday, on this day for which you live, my friend, you need to take advantage of the opportunities to love. Love your spouse. Love your children. Love your family. Love your church. We need to love like we've never loved before. Because my friend, if you're not here tomorrow, oh, I'm telling you, you'll wish you have said those words that you love them, that you cared for them, that you expressed yourself to them. Take it advantage of those opportunities to show love in people's lives. Listen, that word love also carries with it the idea of forgiveness because the Bible says not only are we to love those who love us, but we're to love our enemies as well. Listen, it's time for you to forgive. It's time for you to let some stuff go. You don't have time to be holding on to grudges and remembering things of the past. You need to lay that down, take advantage of this opportunity and move forward. Don't be wishing you had five minutes more. I'm telling you today, we need to love. We need to love those around us. We need to love those who don't uh, and would stand against us today. We need to love today. Secondly, not only love, Oh, but we need to laugh a little bit. We need to laugh. You see, we need to understand that life is a precious gift. This day is a gift from God and one for which we are not guaranteed tomorrow. Oh, we need to learn to enjoy life for just a second. We need to learn that it is a precious gift from Almighty God. I called a friend of mine uh, just the other night in Texas and we talked for over an hour <laughs> And he's one of those guys that I can just tell some of the things that might be going wrong in my life and he can do the same, but we can do so in a comical way. And we just laugh and laugh and laugh. T take a minute to laugh at life. Take a minute to laugh at some of the things you're going through. Take a minute to laugh at the joy that you might find in the smile of a child, uh, the gifts that you find in life today, the sunrise that you're looking at. Find a little joy in your life today, my friend. Learn to both love today and learn, my friend, to laugh as well. Thirdly, I want you to learn to live. Live in the moment. Oh, you see, we think so much about what's got to happen five minutes from now, 30 minutes from now, two days from now. Live today. We will miss today thinking about tomorrow. Oh, friend, listen, we need to live today. Live in the moment. Live in this second that God has. We miss so many opportunities right here in front of us today thinking too much about tomorrow. Oh, don't miss the opportunity, my friend, to love. Don't miss the opportunity to laugh today. Don't miss the opportunity to live in this second and enjoy the life that God has given you, my friend. And then finally, also take opportunity to listen. There are people around you today that need to be heard. And so many times we are so focused on ourselves, we don't hear what our spouse is trying to say. We don't hear what our kids are trying to say. We don't understand what the people who are hurting around us are trying to tell us because we're just not listening. Listen, we need to stop today and quit talking. God gave us two ears and one mouth because we're supposed to listen twice as much as we talk. And we need to stop and we need to listen to the people around us and be that aid within their life. Be that Jesus to them. Oh, my friend, we need to take opportunities that are right before us today and take advantage of. Don't be like Felix and say for a more convenient time. There's not going to be a more convenient time. My friend, take advantage of the opportunities that you have today. Oh, Felix, miss that golden opportunity. Don't you miss your opportunities that God has given you to love and to laugh and to live today. Take advantage of them, my friend. Live life to the fullest today. Oh, there was a song, I believe it was by Vince Gill. It says, live like you were dying. My friend, we don't know. We don't know that we'll be here tomorrow. Oh, my friend, I want to live like this is my last day. If this is my last day, what would I do? How would I treat people? What would I go make right? Maybe we need to live life just that way. Don't miss the golden opportunities that are right here in your life today. Live, laugh, love with all of your heart, and let God bless you and use you for his kingdom today. Have I told you lately that I love you? Because I do. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunities that we will face today. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunities we have to serve you. God, I pray you bless us. You watch over us today. 
I pray, God, we take advantage of those opportunities and live our life to the fullest. Let us show that love. Let us laugh a little bit. Father, let us live our life, and Lord, let us give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. My friend, I pray you have the greatest day you've ever had. I pray you share Jesus on every hand, and I do love you today.